to go flashing through the highlights. Uh, these slides are all available for you, so don't panic if you miss something. Uh, you're not intend I'm not intending to read every slide, um, but you can afterwards if you see anything that's vaguely interesting to you. Uh, just quickly, we're, we're approaching 500 memberships uh, around the world, and it's getting kind of tense as to when we're going to actually make the 500, so that's kind of nice. Egypt joined us this, uh, this quarter. Uh, they're the countries, uh, 25 new membership agreements signed in the, in the quarter uh, from those countries. Kind of nice. They joined these forums, Healthcare, IT for IT, Open Platform 3.0, and One Gold membership. Uh, that was an upgrade for one of our existing members. Um, the, Open Group, uh, the Archimate Forum, the Architecture Forum, the Face Consortium, and the Security Forum all gained new members. Archimate, I want to talk a little bit about. Um, it is... Uh, growing quite considerably. We're now using it, we're starting to use it, and I'm starting to encourage people to use it in any diagrams that we put into any publications that we make. So I've started by um, forcing the folk in OTTF to look at Archimate models for the process for accrediting organizations. But in a normal sense for architecture, it does help to clarify the system and bridge, build those bridges. We've seen certification for Archimate grow by about 11% in the quarter, which is nice. It's on a good trajectory now. If you go to that URL for the um, publications at the bottom there, uh, you can get all of those things. And I've highlighted the snapshots because I want to talk a little bit about snapshots. I think people don't really understand why we do them. And of course, I've got a link to Archie, which is the open source free tool that I use for uh, using Archimate. So the snapshots, uh, they're not a standard. They are information put out publicly to enable people to provide feedback on those standards. So we're looking for comments to come back. And there's a, an email address for those comments. And there's a couple of snapshots out there that I'm not sure everyone really knows about. You can find them on that URL that I showed you. There is a snapshot for the model exchange file format. So this is for the interchange between different tools. And it's got a number of goals, portability, completeness, and all of those. But the important thing is I would like people to read them, take a look at them, if you're interested in uh, modeling tools, and provide feedback to that uh, email address if you can. The roadmap for the Archimate forum, these are the things they're working on. Um, the next version of Archimate, they're looking at that uh, coming out at the first quarter, so this time next year. Uh, the harmonization program, Project Harmony with Toga, you'll see that come up again, and a bunch of other things. All right, I'm going to flash through them so I can get through in the time. A bunch of um, publications, that model exchange file format was published in the first quarter. There's a load of other things that are coming through. Togaf. Um, we're now over 41,000 uh, certified individuals uh, around the world, nearly 42 actually. And um, again, the, the take a look at the publication site. Um, we need to tidy it up a little bit, but there's an awful lot of information there. The Architecture Forum uh, are starting to make some progress on the evolution of TOGA. So we're starting to see some things coming together. We'll see some more of that this week. And uh, hopefully, we'll start seeing that come through. Uh, there's a second project, the part two. And then you've got a no number of other activities around capabilities, Project Harmony with Archimate, the ecosystem, um, and all of those things. So a number of publications uh, you can find there. Again, if you're interested in these, pick up these um, slides afterwards. As you're a, an attendee here, you've got access to all of these slides. Uh, and if you can't find them, I can email them to you. To, so just send me an email. DirectNet, not many people know about. This is uh, largely with the US uh, Navy. It's around things like waveform. Um, some of the things that they're doing are quite exciting. It's, it's the possibility of linking up every aeroplane in the, in the sky as a node to create this net mesh network type. Kind of amazing. Enterprise Management Forum, 
Uh, if you're looking for enterprise management standards that we've published on the publication site, don't look under enterprise management because they ain't there because I tried it. Right? They're under systems management. Don't know why, but that's where they are. Exploration, mining, metals, and minerals, a little of all of that. That uh, is our vertical. Um, Serena, uh, the forum director, did a fantastic presentation on what they're doing in exploration, mining, metals, and minerals. So again, those slides will be available to you. Um, they've done an awful lot of work in the reference architecture. They're now doing application mapping, which is kind of interesting stuff. So here we've got um, reference architectures for mining. And one of the tests we had to do was when we, when we talked about this, we had to say, you know, will this convince a mine manager that it's worth looking at and worth adopting? So they went along and, and talked to this um, mine manager about what M was doing, what the M forum was doing. And this guy, you know, his, his primary concerns are how much am I getting out of the ground today and how many people have got injured or worse, right? Does he want to care about this stuff? Actually, he does. And uh, we've got a champion, a mine manager, that's really pushing this stuff. They're working to continue that. And we are looking at other verticals that we want to get done. The Open Group Phase Consortium, um, they're, they're meeting uh, in the US. And um, they, they get about 180 people for each, each event that they meet at. A lot of activity going on. Uh, for anyone that doesn't know, it's about uh, portability standards for the controls in airplanes, whether they're, they've got wings, no wings, they've got uh, manned, unmanned, any of those things. But any of the, the avionics, if we can make them all plug and play, it should save a lot of money for the government. It should open up markets for the vendors like Lockheed Boeing, uh, Northrop Grumman, and all of those. So the roadmap. Uh, they're working too. Um, most people will skip over that, I'm sure. But there's a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff going on. The Healthcare Forum, uh, been in the news, uh, got a lot of um, coverage for the work that they did on the uh, Federal Health Information Model uh, and the comments on that. Uh, got a lot of uh, very positive publicity around that and recognition. So doing really well there. It's about uh, the challenges in the healthcare. If we can bring our vision of boundless information flow to the healthcare industry, think what efficiencies could be uh, delivered, potentially what improvements to services could be made. I don't think we need to save money there. We just need to improve the services. If we can get data flowing more easily between different parts of the health services, in different parts of the world, then we've made a major breakthrough. Healthcare Forum, they're working on, uh, they've, they've published it, or they will publish the white paper next quarter. Uh, they're working on advancing healthcare, some more work with the, the FIM, as it's called, Federal Healthcare Information Model. And there's some publications coming out ahead of time. IT for IT, IT for IT forum is going, growing like crazy. It's, we launched it, I think, last October with about eight members. We've now got uh, too many to fill up a PowerPoint in small type. It is absolutely fantastic. It's got a lot of attention. Uh, it really is, you know, in s we've, we've, we've said for a long time that we're in the business Many of our organizations are in the business of using IT to run the business that they are employed in, whether that's a government business or a, a commercial business. We now got to manage the business of IT. How do we get our arms around everything that's going on? How do we make it more effective? How do we make it more efficient? Right? So the IT for IT forum is the place where that's happening. And by participating in that, there's an awful lot of opportunity to not only contribute, but also to learn from some very smart people and to access that network and build relationships for life. Here we're working on a technical standard, some guides, white papers, uh, and they will be coming out at some stage. 
Open Trusted Technology Forum. That's about risk and security and um, uh, in the supply chain of IT products. Um, again, what they're doing there, protecting the customers from supply chain risk from malicious uh, counterfeit or, or malware. Uh, again, a lot of work going on there. And you may have seen one of the first Archimate models if you saw Dave's presentation yesterday. The, um, the, the standard, uh, the o Open Trusted Technology Provider standard has been submitted to ISO, or is being submitted to ISO. Um, so we're looking at that potentially becoming an international standard, being adopted by the international community in, in that way. Uh, we're also working on a simplified tra Chinese translation so that it is uh, capable of being adopted in China. And again, this is a, a global standard for how we're going to manage the risk. And bear in mind that everything that people buy, they're buying through a global supply chain. This is how it started with the US Department of Defense saying we're buying a lot of products through a global supply chain. We don't have any option because of cost and capabilities. We have to do this, but we need to be sure that we can trust what we buy. Open Platform 3.0 is uh, the nexus of forces, the convergence of social, mobile, cloud, big data, and the Internet of Things. Imagine what we could do if all of these worked seamlessly together. So that's what we're trying to do. That's what our members here are trying to do. We've for a long time done things in the uh, SOA area that have, again, been adopted by ISO. We've done things in the cloud uh, area with the reference architecture and the governance model, parts of which have been adopted by ISO. Internet of Things, we've published uh, standards, which I'll talk about. We have a snapshot open. Um, so there is a snapshot of what we think, or what our members think, is the direction for Open Platform 3.0. It's their thinking. We need feedback, so please take a look at it if you can, and if you have interest in that area, and use that uh, email address I gave earlier to provide some feedback on what we're trying to do there. Uh, this is what it's doing, so if you need to check it, have a look at this slide. This is what that's, that uh, snapshot's looking at. Again, looking for feedback. We're going to hear from uh, Carrie Framling uh, this morning, uh, in the last session before lunch, about uh, the Internet of Things, which is part of Open Platform 3.0. They've published these two standards, the uh, messaging interface and the data format, which Carrie says will do for the Internet of Things what HTTP and HTML did for the Internet. We need to bring that message out, uh, but if it does that, it's going to be very, very powerful. There's a roadmap for Open Platform working on the snapshot of a, another version uh, and moving on from there. Open Platform 3.0 publications uh, coming up there. And Platform, which is different from Open Platform, this is the original base platform for the single Unix specification. Uh, again, working on a core agenda on that one. Real-time and embedded systems forum. This is where, uh, again, the, the name of the forum may not be representative of what they're doing. Uh, what we're actually doing there is now focus very much on high assurance. Um, they've done the dependability through assurance. They're working on a number of areas like MILS, uh, standards for high assurance, multi-core APIs, and so on. So that's the kind of things that's going on in the real-time and embedded systems forum. And the Open Group Security Forum, again, growing quite well and doing a lot of good work. This forum is now a great place to network with smart people in the security area. We had one member that said, the reason I go to the security forum is because I can learn a lot from smart people in security. Other people are going there because there's a peer group that they can discuss those critical issues. The other part of it, of course, is that because the security forum is within the open group, they've got access to many of the issues going on in IT for IT, in OTTF, in architecture, and so on, that they can be exposed to as part of the security forum and be involved with those forums to help 
on what the security issues may be that those other forums would come across. So it's a very exciting time to be in the security forum now. They're working on um, <coughs> uh, some TNSP stands for something that I don't like at all. It's called TOGAF Next Security pro uh, Project. Um, we don't do TOGAF Next. We, we, we're evolving TOGAF, right? Anyway, they're, they're working on their input to, to what we're going to do with, with TOGAF and, and on risk areas. Number of publications from the Security Forum. Open Fair. Uh, so the certification on Open Fair is going very well. Um, and this is all about uh, certifying knowledge of the taxonomy on risk analysis. Right? So um, organizations like State Farm are putting 